Do you know how your retirement might be affected by Tennessee divorce law? In divorce, the marital portion of any pension, 401k or IRA, is a divisible asset. I'm not talking about Social Security. Social Security retirement benefits are not typically considered as marital property by Tennessee courts and can't be divided or altered by divorce. All other retirement assets could be divided depending on whether they're marital property or not. That includes governmental pensions, military retired pay, 401ks, and individual retirement arrangements. Hi, my name is Miles Mason. I'm a divorce attorney and a certified public accountant. My law firm represents clients in the greater Memphis, Collierville, Germantown, Eads, and Bartlett, Tennessee areas. In today's talk, I'll explain how pensions and retirement accounts are divided in Tennessee divorce law. It's a very, very exciting topic, but more, it's an important topic. Most working spouses have their own retirement, although seldom in equal value. If marital property, both spouses' retirement must be equitably divided in the divorce. Along with the marital home, retirement plans and pensions typically represent the spouse's greatest assets. In many divorces, retirement plans represent more than 75% of the spouse's net assets. Division of a pension, 401k or IRA, can have a substantial impact on each spouse's financial security later in life. It can, nece it can necessitate restructuring and rebuilding diminished assets. It can mean delaying retirement. It can mean a leaner future. For mature spouses, those at or near retirement age, the consequences of a divide pension will be felt immediately. Reduced financial resources require a scaled back lifestyle. Younger spouses still have many working years ahead of them. And they have the luxury of rebuilding pensions and retirement accounts. But full retirement may still have to be delayed. For the spouse who's already retired, there's probably no reasonable way to recover through employment. Of course, age, health, education, and work history have a lot to do with a person's options. You need to know how your retirement assets will be altered by Tennessee divorce law. Specifically, you need to know, first, how to identify retirement assets and pensions. Second, how retirement assets are classified as marital or separate property. Third, how retirement assets are valued. Fourth, how retirement assets are equitably divided. This process of identification, classification, valuation, and division of retirement assets it's, is not optional, it's required. First, identifying pensions and retirement assets on pensions. A spouse's pension is deferred compensation through the employer. Every spouse the job ever, ever held before and during the marriage could potentially give rise to retirement assets. At the time of divorce, one or both spouses may already be receiving pension payments. That doesn't mean it's the only retirement assets. Keep looking. There may be closed retirement accounts too. You need to identify those as well in case they're not really closed. Pensions may be vested at the time of the divorce or non-vested. A non-vested non plan means the employee spouse hasn't put in enough years of creditable service to receive the benefits. Maybe the spouse worked there four years, but vesting requires employment for five years. It's contingent, but it's still an asset. Whether vested or non-vested, the marital portion of any pension is subject to division in a Tennessee divorce. There are two categories of pensions, defined benefit plans and defined contribution plans. On defined benefit plans, these are investments controlled by the employer. When the employee retires, the defined benefit plan pays a specific dollar amount. For example, $2,500 a month for life. Defined benefit plans include traditional pensions and annuities. With a traditional pension, payments are made regularly. They're based on years of service, prior compensation, and other factors. An annuity is a contractual right to receive a series of payments at regular intervals over a period more than one full year. Annuities can pay a fixed or variable amount. An annuity contract could have been purchased by the employee spouse alone. 
or purchased by the spouse with the employer's help. Defined contribution plans are more common. They are created by the employer. If you can look at a statement and see the balance, it's most likely a defined contribution plan, but not always. Those plans include 401ks, tax sheltered annuity plans, also called 403b plans, section 457 plans, uh, which are deferred compensation, profit sharing, money purchase plans, employee stock ownership plans, also called ESOPs, simple IRAs, simple 401k plans, and simplified employee pension plans, also called SEPs and SEP IRAs. Let's start with 401ks. A spouse's 401k is an employer-sponsored retirement savings plan. The employer can match the funds with the employee up to a point. A 3% to 3 or 4% match is fairly typical. The spouse invests a portion of each paycheck. This is before taxes are taken out. When that spouse reaches retirement age, withdrawals from the 401k are taxable income. The rules for withdrawal are very complex, but generally the employee must begin taking the distributions by age 70 or so. But, but early withdrawals, say at age 59, are not uncommon. Then there's the Roth 401k. If the retirement plan is a Roth 401k, the spouse pays tax on, tax on each contribution but isn't taxed later when the money is withdrawn. The money can compound tax-free indefinitely. You need to know that some pensions can't be split into two separate interests. By separate interests, I mean one interest or share for the plan participant and one interest or share for the alternate payee, the spouse. An experienced lawyer obtains the summary plan description for each retirement asset. That summary indicates whether the plan can or cannot be split into separate interests. If that's the case, property division must be carefully considered if it can't be divided. Deferred, juris de deferred jurisdiction over the retirement asset or an offset with other marital property may be required. In Tennessee, 2015 legislation changed how government pensions are handled in divorce. When a local government maintains a qualified retirement plan for employees, these are, say, pensions for firefighters, police, and teachers, the pension is divisible in a divorce now, whereas it wasn't able to be in the past. Now a separate interest can be created for the non-employee spouse as the alternate payee. That's if the retirement plan is marital property. Technically, technically, the government pension must have a plan administrator and be qualified under the Internal Revenue Code provisions that are applicable. Some retirement investments are unrelated to employment. These would be IRAs, also known as individual retirement arrangements. Any traditional IRA or Roth IRA that is marital property is divisible in a Tennessee divorce. With a traditional IRA, contributions must stop when the spouse reaches age 70. With a Roth IRA, contributions can continue at any age. Contributions to both IRA types are tied to income, and both have IRS-imposed limits. Contributions to a Roth IRA are not tax-deductible, but the spouse doesn't pay taxes on withdrawals so long as they're taken after reaching the age of 59 and a half. Some or all contributions to a traditional IRA may be tax deductible, with ordinary income taxes paid on withdrawals. Second, retirement assets must be classified as marital property or separate property. You'll need to know the date of acquisition, which is either before or after the marriage. We have two bright line rules. First, only marital property must be divided in a Tennessee divorce. Second, all retirement assets accumulated during the marriage are presumed to be marital property. That presumption is rebuttable with evidence to the contrary. Seldom are retirement assets one or the other, separate or marital property. There's almost always some blurring of the lines. A simple example is the IRA that was funded both before and after the marriage. An IRA that was wholly funded before the marriage is separate property. However, appreciation of, of the IRA during the, marital, during the marriage can be a marital asset. Calculating appreciation of separate property begins with the current value of the retirement assets. 
The current value is then reduced by its value on the date of the marriage or date of acquisition. The difference can be marital property. Other lawyers may ask a forensic accountant to help if the, calcu if the calculation gets even more complicated than that. Third, valuation of retirement assets and pensions. When retirement assets are marital property, they have to be valued. Valuation can be a very complex process. How the retirement asset is valued will depend on the type of investment. A traditional pension does not have the same value as a 401k. How retirement assets are valued depend on many different factors, such as investment risk, built-in capital gains, tax deferral on the original investment, tax deferral on income from an original investment, the spouse who submits the more credible evidence of value may have a serious advantage in the negotiations and or a trial. Many spouses hire a forensic accountant to, to value those retirement assets. I recommend it. That's a very smart thing to do. Forensic accountants are experts in their field. It's not unusual for each spouse to hire a forensic, forensic accountant. Valuation methods can differ and the results often do. In a battle of the experts, the judge will determine which value should be used. My advice is to hire the best valuation expert you can and begin the valuation process early. Early valuations can set the tone for negotiations and settlement. It's possible that your spouse will agree with your forensic accountant's early valuation, in which case a battle of the experts can be avoided. Even when using expert analysis, the best calculations of value are still only estimates. What you can be certain of is that the pension division process is a complex, time-consuming, and often expensive task. But under Tennessee divorce law, it must be done. To calculate the value of, of a participant's pension interest, your attorney will need summary plan description, the text of the pension plan, most recent annual benefit statements and possibly the last three or four years, and the plan administrator's quadro procedures and sample quadro form. With that information, you can negotiate a pension deal in the divorce. You can, understand, you can better understand the proposals for settlement. You can follow the money. But now you're probably wondering, what's a quadro? This takes us to our fourth and final step. Division of marital retirement assets. In Tennessee divorce law, marital retirement assets are equi equitably divided. Equitable means fair. It doesn't mean equal. Property divisions are often unequal, but typically close to a 50-50 split. Judges, in their own minds, may begin with a 50-50 division and make adjustments, adding or reducing a spouse's share based on Tennessee's property division factors. You can read about the statutory property division factors on my website, memphisdivorce.com. But let's focus on pension and retirement division. There are three ways pensions can be handled in a divorce, by separate interest, by offset, and shared interest, okay? Separate interest divides the pension completely between the spouses. Offset leaves the entire pension in the hands of the participant spouse, while other assets of equitable value are exchanged. With shared interest, the asset isn't divided. Instead, the participant receiving the pension pays the former spouse a specific dollar amount following the beginning of the planned payout. This is called deferred distribution or retained jurisdiction. When a pension can't be split into separate interest, then the shared interest method is typically used. Okay? Of the three methods, separate interest and offset are the most common, and parties almost always benefit from creating a separate, separate interest. Lastly, there's the Qualified Domestic Relations Order, or QUADRO. Some lawyers and people call it QDRO. The QDRO, or QUADRO, is a court order implementing division of the retirement asset. It's only used with the divorce or legal separation. If the pension is divisible into separate interest, then the quadro is the document that completes the property division. The quadro orders the plan administrator to, to divide the participant's pension into two separate interests, one interest for each former spouse. The, the quadro can be entered as a court order 
generally within 30 to 90 days after entry of the final decree of divorce. What if the pension isn't divisible into separate interests? In that instance, either the offset or deferred jurisdiction must be used. Neither, neither of those require a quadro. One final note about quadros. They're very complex legal instruments. Any drafting error can be very costly. Pensions can be worth hundreds of thousands of dollars or even over a million dollars. And every pension plan has its own particulars. Don't attempt to write your own quadro. Leave the drafting to an attorney who's a recognized quadro specialist. I'm Miles Mason. Thank you for sharing this time with us.